Good afternoon. I wanted to have a little bit of a talk about a bunch of recent things going on and how they're interconnected and what my take is on all of it. We're going to be discussing a situation where a lunatic decapitated his father and uh, we're going to be talking about a bill that has been introduced into Congress trying to effectively ban militias and then we're going to talk about the Bill of Rights that we have in place and how that completely denies the government from being able to institute such laws. So first of all, the logo you see, that is not a militia logo. Uh, that is our town's logo, except what you see is black. It's actually white. However, when your vinyl cutting software has a white background and it ignores white colors because of the white background, you have to make white any other color so the software sees it. It doesn't matter. Whatever color you load in your vinyl cutter is the color you're cutting, so it really doesn't matter there. But I wanted to make sure people didn't know I was working on some kind of militia <laughs> logo or nothing, but that would be actually kind of cool to include in, but I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, I'm going to cut up some for anybody here in town that would like some. So, but That's not what we're here to talk about. So... You probably are aware that there was this, I mean, completely sickening crime uh, that had just happened in Pennsylvania. And I'm going to put all the links to everything I talk about in the description and the first comment so that way you can read it and whatnot at your own leisure and share it as well if you, if you like. And I figure the best place that we should probably start is with this absolutely gruesome crime. Uh, that was committed and we're going to start there and then we'll kind of work from that So as you see the headline and this is just NBC News as you see the headline Pennsylvania man arrested after allegedly decapitating his father and displaying his head on YouTube and I um, I haven't been able to successfully find the entire 15 minutes of the video what I have found was uh, about a minute and 45 seconds or something like that that did actually include him doing that very thing. And it's disturbing. It is truly, truly disturbing. That This whole, this guy was just completely disturbed. I mean, just absolutely, completely disturbed. He's another one of those individuals that you, you read about and you're like, wait a minute. Why has nobody done anything? Why, you know, because it's one of those situations that if you're aware of the situation, if you are aware of the, the man's actions long before this crime, you would know that you should probably be looking at him kind of, you know, kind of funny. Well, uh, this, this is certainly the case with, with this person. So let me, uh, let me talk about this real quick. Uh, this article here says, a Pennsylvania man has been arrested after allegedly killing his father before displaying a decapitated head in a gruesome YouTube video while spouting right-wing conspiracy theories. Gotta love how they throw that in, right? Justin Moan, 32, is accused of killing his father, Michael Moan, police told NBC News. Moan was taken into custody about a hundred miles away from the crime scene on suspicion of first-degree murder, abuse of a corpse, and possessing an instrument of crime with intent, according to a court docket released early Wednesday. He was arraigned at 4 a.m. and denied bail, Middletown Township Police Captain Pete Feeney said. In a YouTube video, which is titled Moan's Militia, call to arms for the American patriots and is cited in a police complaint. Moan is seen wearing gloves and holding his father's head in a plastic bag. Later, the head can be seen in a cooking pot. Moan says his father was a federal employee for 20 years and refers to him as a traitor, calling for the death of all federal officials and attacking President Joe Biden's administration, the Black Lives Matter movement, the LGBTQ community, and Antifa activists. YouTube removed the video, which is more than 14 minutes long, hours after it was posted. Yeah, like six hours after it was posted. And I sit there and I, I think about, 
live streams that I have literally seen go blink because somebody showed a firearm, right? So you can't convince me that this video wasn't flagged and tagged the moment that it was uploaded. I guarantee it was. So let's talk about this for a moment. For one, I don't know if it's even been verified yet that his father was a federal employee. I owned apparently owned a couple of businesses, one of them being a um, a cleaning business, and I can't remember what the other ordeal was, but um, nothing that would indicate federal employment. Not saying that he didn't have it, I'm just unaware of it. But uh, Justin Moan had made some pretty bizarre claims, uh, some of which include being the Messiah, others which include being the next president or that he was the president. I mean, this dude is a wacko from just top to bottom. And there was a lot of things that he had claimed that I don't think that was true. One of them involved, uh, I think it was Microsoft or something. He claimed that he, he worked for Microsoft or something when he was in Colorado or some kind of crazy stuff. And I, it's just unbelievable the claims that this guy had made. Now, you would think that stuff like that would have well put him on a radar. But as we have seen time and time and time again... When such atrocities happen, these individuals that, in many cases, we find out have had light shown on them, well, apparently they just can't seem to do anything. However, you can have a, a spouse or soon-to-be ex-spouse or, or a disgruntled neighbor or something like that have your firearms come and taken without a shred of evidence. And this is the part that I don't get. I don't... I don't this whole laws being subjected, you know, subjective is, is, I don't, you know, that's where the problem is. That is where the problem is. Because we got one group of people that is given a green light to do anything they, they want, and another group of people that can't even breathe without being under scrutiny for it. That's, that's going to be a problem, and it's going to continue to be a problem in this country. So... I don't want to, you know, sit there and go on and on and on about this guy. Uh, it's it's disturbing. It's disgusting. It's it should have never happened because there were definitely enough red flags there that he should have something should have been done. And I I can't tell you what should have been done because we don't have the tools. We don't have the things that we used to have in order to deal with, with people like this to prevent stuff like this from happening. What am I talking about? I'm talking about things like state mental institutions. We no longer have anything like that. All we have now is a, a group of psychologists out there telling you that you can be a cat, you can be a rabbit, you can be anything you damn well please, and that you have full right to blame every single body else for every single trial and trauma in your life which is very unrealistic well that's how you wind up in situations like this that's how you have individuals on the street that commit crimes like this so let's uh let's go on and let's talk about this bill that's being introduced i show it as hr 6981 Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act of 2024. So this here says, um, To amend Title 18, United States Code, to prohibit unauthorized private paramilitary activity and for other purposes. Don't you always love that? Other purposes. To amend Title 18, United States Code, to prohibit unauthorized private paramilitary activity and for other purposes, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. The in short title, we've already read that twice. Uh, prohibition, the section two here, uh, prohibition of unauthorized private paramilitary activity. And it says in general, part, part one, or part I, I guess, part I of Title 18, United States Code, is amended by adding at the end of the following, and then it says uh, definitions, 
Um, it says uh, in this chapter, definitions, ammunition. The term ammunition has the meaning given to the term in section. We aren't going to go all through this, but armed forces, dangerous weapon, explosive or incendiary device, firearm, large capacity ammunition feeding device, you know, like a 30-round magazine, uh, National Guard, person, private paramilitary organization, regularly organized state militia, state, and it goes through and it talks, you know, it says unauthorized private paramilitary activity. And it says, uh, A, offense, it shall be unlawful to knowingly in a circumstance described in subsection B while acting as part of of or on behalf of a private paramilitary organization and armed with a firearm, explosive or incendiary device, you know, like a big lighter in your pocket, uh, or other dangerous weapon. And it says, one, publicly patrol, drill, or engage in techniques capable of causing bodily injury or death. That's pretty wide open and blanket, is it not? I mean... What if you're running down the street with scissors, right? Is is that going to qualify? Apparently so. Interfere with, interrupt, or attempt to interfere with, or interrupt government operations or a government proceeding. But by, by the way, we've already got stuff like this about impeding federal agents. You could ask the Bundys about it. They could tell you a little bit about it. Interfere with or intimidate another person in that person's exercise of any right under the Constitution of the United States. Now again, I revert back to what I was saying about how it seems as if all these laws apply to one group of people, but none of them apply to another group of people. Okay? Because apparently... You can be involved in a mostly peaceful protest where an entire block is on fire and that's somehow apparently not an attempt to intimidate other people or anything. I, I don't get it. I'm just reporting what I see. Four says, assume the function of a law enforcement officer, peace officer, or public official, whether or not acting under color of law and thereby assort, assert authority or purport to assert authority over another person without the consent of that person, or, five, trying to engage in any activity described in paragraphs one through four. Hmm. So now you can't even train with your friends on firearms. I mean, this is, this is really, this is really insane. It really, truly is insane. But, you know, just how any gun law is unlawful because shall not be infringed means something. All of this is unlawful. And I'm going to show you how. So, first of all, we got to mention the Bill of Rights because that's where all of this is. And under the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Okay. Well, there is something that we often talk about that's very closely associated with the, the First Amendment. And I've mentioned a bunch of times because it's something that gets violated like crazy. And that is the freedom of association. See, that's, that's a privilege that we have in this country that we can talk to one another without, you know, being charged with being direct. We're supposed to be able to without being charged for being directly you know, involved. For instance, let me give you an example. I am supposed to be able to, as a, and I'm not a journalist, but if I were a journalist, a reporter, I am supposed to be able to go and talk to a terrorist organization and sit down with them at a table and, and get their viewpoints, you know, make record of, of their point of view, their story. And I am not supposed to be allowed to have myself uh, attached to that terrorist organization because I went and interviewed them, okay? Now, 
we saw this bringing back up uh, Mr. Bundy in that situation. We saw this. In fact, we even had this happen to us by a newspaper. A newspaper came out and tried to directly associate us with everything that was going on at Malheur. And all we were doing was reporting on it. And that happened after that we did an interview with the Final Four at Malheur uh, Wildlife Refuge. And we spoke with David Fry and, and uh, Sandy, was it Sean? Yeah, I think Sean and Sandy Anderson. And I can't, there was a fourth person, and I just can't remember who that fourth person was. But they tried using that interview as a way to directly link and associate us with everything that was going on there. And, and I made sure to call it out as quickly as I saw it because... With the way that our our lawfare works now, uh, they will do everything they can to drag people into stuff that have nothing to do with it just to be able to silence them. So getting back to this whole freedom of association thing, I kind of explained, you know, the benefits of it and why we have it. And right here, we're just going to talk briefly on this. Supreme Court has long held that the First Amendment's protection of free speech, assembly, and petition logically extends to include a freedom of association. Generally, this means we have the freedom to associate with others who have similar political, religious, or cultural beliefs. This separates freedom. Um, uh, this separate freedom grew out of challenges to state laws that burden the NAACP and was challenged by security investigations of the Communist Party. So, this even goes further than the explanation that I gave. I told you about our situation, and I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, yeah, I, I supported much of what they were, were doing there in, uh, in Oregon. Because what was happening was a crime in itself. What was happening to the, fam- the Hammond family was absolutely mind-blowing. And so, in that aspect, yeah, I, I am in alignment with them. However, that's not what we were doing. We weren't trying to promote them. We were trying to get their story out. And... Here, it plainly states that it didn't matter anyway, even if if we did align ourselves with them, that that is not to be held against us. And it goes on and talks about First Amendment. I already read that. Don't need to read that again. But I am going to read the first paragraph here. It says... Um, United States Library of Congress, the Constitution of the United States of America, Analysis and Interpretation. We're just going to read the first paragraph. It is beyond debate that freedom to engage in association for the advancement of beliefs and ideas is an inseparable aspect of the liberty assured by the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. So we're going to go there in a second. Which embraces freedom of speech, of course... It is immaterial whether the belief sought to be advanced by association pertain to political, economic, religious, or cultural matters and state action which may have the effect of curtailing the freedom to associate is subject to the closest scrutiny. It appears from the court's opinions that the right of association is derivative from the First Amendment guarantees of speech, assembly, and petition although it has at times been referred to as an independent freedom protected by the First Amendment. The doctrine is a fairly recent construction, the problems associated with it having previously arisen primarily in the context of loyal security investigations of Communist Party membership, and these cases having been resolved without giving rise to any separate theory of association. So let's go ahead and discuss the 14th Amendment a little bit, and there are some things in here that are that are a bit interesting, and I'm not going to go through and read all this. I'm going to just go down to the stuff that is interesting. So, in here, where it has the transcripts of um, the 14th Amendment, uh, they talk about, 
you know, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, and property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, do we see that going on right now? I think not. And it goes on section 2 to say, Representatives shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole numbers of persons in each state, excluding Indians not taxed, so they're not included. But when the right to vote at any election for the choice of electors for President and Vice President of the United States, representatives in Congress, the executive and judicial officers of a state, or the members of the legislature thereof, is denied to any of the male inhabitants of such state being 21 years of age and citizens of the United States or in any way abridged except for participation in and in rebellion or other crime, the basis of representation therein shall be reduced in the proportion which the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of male citizens 21 years of age in such state. Huh. Male. I'm surprised that there hasn't been the woke crowd that's been all over the 14th Amendment. On, on these particular but no no what's the woke doing with the 14th amendment oh well the woke is trying to get Trump removed from ballots is what they're trying to do with this 14th amendment now it actually says that you can do similar ish things right I'm, I'm saying similar ish let's read number three here it said no person, this morally more directs to what they were trying to do with Trump, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such disability. Okay? We're going to go ahead and read the section four here. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services and suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. But neither United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States or any claim for the loss of emancipation of any slave, but all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. And it says the Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. So technically, technically, you could say that if they wanted to, anybody that was receiving any type of government assistance or anything like that, that if Essentially, if they participated in, oh, I don't know, the riots that were going on, the whole Chaz Chop nonsense and all of that, technically, yeah, anybody that was receiving any kind of help from the government could be taken off of that because of their activity in that. But we didn't see that happen. Again, all of these laws, and I'm not saying it, I'm, I'm not, taking a side here on, on whether they should have or whether they shouldn't have because you know you open yourself up for a lot of things whenever you just start supporting stuff like that and you can't go crying when that stuff gets used against you when you were laughing as it got used against somebody else it doesn't really work that way it's not supposed to anyway so we have to be very careful about what it is that we do support, what it is that we get behind, because, again, when that you know, pendulum of power swings back towards us, it's likely going to catch us up in it, too. Just like as you watch what happens if our country makes it much further, 
if you watch what happens is this pendulum of power swings back and forth it's going to get more insane and more insane it's not even come close to how crazy that i have a feeling it's going to wind up getting but the simple matter of the fact is they can't legally deprive us of the right of forming militia whether you want to look at the first amendment whether you want to look at the 14th amendment doesn't much matter and then when you include the second amendment in which it directly states a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed so between the first second and 14th amendment they have absolutely no standing to be able to enact stuff like this and again it's it's really bizarre to me how it is getting targeted on one group of people largely you know a political group and i'm not you know me or you should know me i don't i don't root for any political side i think they're all equally nonsense to be honest but i think that's the whole point as long as they can keep all the nonsense going and going and going, what do they got to worry about? That's how they control us. That's how they get away with doing anything they want. Getting stuff like this passed and put into law. Because they can keep people divided, even on things that they should be united on. Because free speech, the right to bear arms, it's something that all of us should be absolutely in favor of because without that free speech without that right to bear arms you're not going to keep any rights and that's been proven in history time and time again so think twice especially when you're in conversation and stuff think twice before you speak or before you type because the rights that you're willing to take away from another are the rights that you're giving up yourself. Shalom.